Question number nine, the Honourable Nikki Kay. Yeah. Question to the Minister of Education. Does he stand by his statements and actions regarding students and teachers? The Honourable Chris Hopkins. Speaker, yes. Mr Speaker, supplementary question. Does he stand by his statement that he will work in a way that respects and engages iwi, given Sir Toby Curtis's statement today? If the minister hasn't gone to the schools to talk to the people in the schools, if the minister hasn't gone and spoken to the parents, if the ministry hasn't gone to the schools and talked properly to the teachers, if the ministry hasn't done their job properly, I'm left with no other view than that this is a process of bullying that we have never had or experienced in this country. Mr Speaker, in answer to the first part of the question, yes, absolutely, because this government believes that Māori students, regardless of where they are going to school, are entitled to a world-class education so that they can fulfil their full potential. Uh, where I differ, where I differ from the quotation of the member, I don't think Māori students should have to leave the public education system in order to get the quality of education they deserve. Yes. Mr Speaker, supplementary question to the Minister. Will he commit to asking the Education and Workforce Select Committee to urgently take out provisions from the Education Amendment Bill that remove the partnership school model in light of the claim in front of the Waitangi Tribunal? Mr Speaker, no. Mr Speaker, supplementary question. Does he agree with Sir Toby Curtis, who, when asked about what he would want to say to him and the Prime Minister regarding partnership schools, that this is a situation that calls for a bit of araha. And where is the love for these students that he won't even bother visiting? Um, Mr Speaker, no, I don't agree. Well, I do agree with the member that, in fact, in, in all of the decisions we make about education, we should show a little bit of araha. And I am currently considering the applications of uh, the existing charter schools to become state schools, and I'm not going to um, make comment on that while that process is ongoing. Mr Speaker, supplementary question to the Minister. Will he take responsibility for his actions and start listening, given a large group of principals have given him a fail mark on NCA, primary teachers are striking for the first time in 24 years, and there is a claim lodged in the Waitangi Tribunal alleging multiple breaches by him and the government? Uh, Mr Speaker, th I'll answer all three of those things, but, but first, uh, this government is, is going to great lengths to listen to all New Zealanders' right. views when it comes to education, and we keep being criticised by the opposition for doing so, uh, Mr Speaker, who seem to alternate between saying we're consulting too much and alternate between uh, saying we're not consulting enough. With regard to, with regard to the uh, threat of strike action by the primary teachers, um, this government is not responsible for the current pay and conditions right. that the teachers are dissatisfied with. All of those agreements were reached under the previous uh, government. With regard to charter schools, this government's position on charter schools has been very clear from the beginning. Uh, Mr Speaker, and with regard to the NCA, we are listening to everyone uh, with regard to the NCA. I have spoken to some of the principals uh, who have been signatories to that advertisement that appeared in the newspaper, and they made it very clear to me their view, um, to, to almost directly quote one of the, the principals who I spoke to, that the principals should have been consulted first, they should have come up with the recommendations. Government should have given them feedback on that, and then the principal should have made the decision. The government disagrees with that approach. Question number 10, Gareth Hughes. Associate Minister of Agriculture.